So, in this video, we just start over from where we left on in the video before and uh, start to explain how we can make two-dimensional data storage like data tables that we usually have. So, things that are not come as a list, but things that come with rows and columns, so in two dimensions. And for doing so, we introduce for our data set another vector, another variable, and that's for example h, and h should be for our four individuals here, let's say 21, um, 25, 28, and 35. And to combine these numbers here, with our original um, vector, we have to use a matrix. So a matrix is the matrix is um, just a two D representation of different um, vectors, where the same position in rows represents the same item, while the columns represents different variables. And actually, matrices are also used in matrix algebra, so there it doesn't matter if this is actually uh, what rows or columns represent. Well, it matters, but it's not used in the same way like we use them for data storage and probably also later on for the data frames. Um, but it should not care. We should not care for that now. We just want to have the height and the h vector combined in one data table. For doing so, I specify my, let's say, uh, people, people matrix that should consist, it should be a matrix. I specify that by giving the matrix command. You can see already in the short help here. Uh, we need some data to put into the matrix. We specify, come on, you guy. Um, how many rows or how many calls we want to have and also if we want to go by row or not. We will not talk about that now. Um, so to combine our height and our h vector I just concatenate them together. So height and h and I say that we want to have two columns because we put in two um, vectors here. So n call should be 2. And when I then look into my people's matrix, I can see that here in the first column we have the heights, in the second column we have the ages, and we have four rows for our four individuals and two columns for our two variables. Um, so it might also be in now we get a more complicated data set. It might also be nice to identify again those rows and columns by names. And for doing so, I cannot use the names command any longer because I look that up and try to put in here, for example, our um, individual names. And I just copy paste from up here and look into that. I got some strange thing going on here. I have some attributes down here that are the names and you can see that we have here eight elements in this name attributes which equates to our eight positions here in the matrix. When we specifically want to um, say that these are our row names, we can use that command. So row names, row dot names of people matrix currently is null and I set it to this value. And now if I look up the people's matrix, we have the row names here set like we probably want them to have to identify the individuals. And we still have these attribute names down here 
and to get rid of that because we don't need that I just recreate the matrix and now it looks like it should be so I command command this out this part of the script this is um, how you can specify in R script a command which means whatever is after this hash um, is not evaluated as code but you can write your arbitrary text in that for example making commands what the next um, function is doing and that's also very necessary for longer scripts to make some commands uh, for later use because you soon will forget what actually are you doing within the script and it's always better to make as many commands in your scripts as possible or as, as necessary. So we have specified our row names and it might be quite clear that we also can have the column names by call names of the people's matrix and these should be um, what was it height and h Did you please see that I used here the equation marks because I want to use these elements here as um, as strings and not the variable that has also the same name here not this content so when I now look into that, you can see that Hannah, Leon, Lucas, and Leonie are still there, and Hyde and H are for the columns, the names. And you probably will see that here is a difference between both uh, commands. These are actually, you can use both ways of specifying that. So if I go again this way, it gives the same result. So you have two ways of writing row names or row dot names doesn't matter okay um, now we have a named matrix here and we can also do some calculations on that for example we can calculate the sum of our matrix and this is quite a high number and it's only one number because it sums the every cell within the whole matrix so this is just the sum of every individual cell here um, including the age and the height. Um, we can also see that when we apply the length column that we had before. And with that you can see that this matrix has a length of eight elements because we have eight cells within the matrix. To have an idea how the actual how many rows and columns we have, we can use the dimension dim command uh, command sorry and now we get two numbers here four rows and two columns and please keep in mind in R it's kind of a convention that you always at first have the rows and then the columns so whenever you specify something that represents rows and columns rows are always the first dimension columns are always the second dimension and this holds also true when you get into 3D data sets, which we will not do here, which are sometimes used, but then you have also rows, columns, and then the third Z axis that you can't see here on screen. Okay, um, you could also individually get the number of rows and the number of columns by a row of our matrix. It's four and you probably guess it already and call gives you the number of columns here two columns um, and we can also access individual elements in the matrix let's have a look here and now for accessing elements again we need these uh, square brackets and let's say we want to access this element here so it is in the third row and in the first column so remember rows before columns i say third row and first column and there we get this value here um you could also for example like to have one whole row and then you just leave out the second number when you do that you got this third row here and 
both elements that are in that row. Or if your data set would contain more variables, you would also get all the other elements here. So with leaving out this number, you get all elements there. You can also turn it around and say, for example, you want to have all elements of the first column, and you put a blank or a nothing here, just a comma, and then the one, and then you get a vector back, which contains all the heights of these individuals. What is also possible with matrices is said that rows and columns are not so fixed in a matrix in respect to their meaning. And I can turn this matrix around by using the T command. When I do that, you can see here now the rows becomes columns and the columns becomes rows. And we have now a longer, uh, a wider but shorter data matrix where the heights are, or the, the variables are in the rows and the individual cases are in the columns. For some calculations or for some data management that can become quite handy. So what happens if we do some calculations here? Let's say I multiply my matrix by scalar and the result is probably is very similar to what we have seen with the vector that every element here in the whole matrix is multiplied by this one number here. Um, what happens if we multiply that by a vector? Let's say I want to have a sequence from 100 to 400 and I want to have length out 4, so I want to have 4 elements back, which gives me this 100, 200, 300 and 400 vector. And if I multiply my matrix with that, you can see that the first element is multiplied by the first element in the vector. And then it goes again row-wise. So the second element in that column here is multiplied by the second element in that vector, the third by the third, the fourth by the fourth. And then recycling also already uh, gets in. So the fifth element, we don't have five elements in that vector is multiplied again by the first, second, third, fourth. If I make this here an 8, you can see now we have 8 elements here in that vector and now the first element is multiplied again by the first and so on and so forth and the fifth element is multiplied by the fifth element in that vector. So then the whole, um, it goes cell-wise. So whenever you do some calculations in the matrix, you can also imagine the matrix of being transformed into a vector cell-wise, um, starting with uh, counting down every rows in one column and then switching to the next column. And then this multiplication takes place and you get back a matrix reformed like that. Okay, matrices are more from the mathematical part, but if you want to come to data storage, there are more convenient way of uh, storing data because one of the things with matrices is I can store any, um, any or all elements in a matrix must have the same data type. For example, I use make another, try to make another um, another column here, another variable. I call that, make that the third column. So there is nothing like a third column here. Um, I want to add the names again. And this doesn't work like that. Um, I have to again make a matrix here and I 
combine this in a way that I put my ad hoc um, vector in the back of that and say I want now have three columns and first thing you might notice is that now every value here is in quotation marks because I have to I try to put in a string vector and this means because every element has to, has to have the same data type in the matrix all other elements are also um, understood as string vector so we can't do any calculations any longer with these elements here <coughs> Pardon. <coughs> what you also probably notice is that I haven't written this whole um, command in one line I just made some breaks here and that might be quite convenient to have a more uh, clearer idea about how your script is formatted so you can format this uh, command in multiple lines to not run this line out of your window here um, you have just to make sure that um, when you end a line here by um, return it shouldn't already make a meaningful statement so here I have left the comma here and also open brackets and with that R knows okay there is something still coming later on and I wait for the next line to complete this command okay still we want to have the height the age and the names of the individuals in one data storage and for doing so there is this data frame uh, class type in R. So let's say we want to have people not matrix but I call that df for data frame and this should contain a data frame where my high equals to my height vector I have set before my h vector should equal to my h vector I said before and my names should come no, this one actually should come from my ad hoc vector here so with that we have this data set set up and while I was just making this mistake what happens if I do it that way just watch what happens up here you can see that now a names um, thing has popped up here because I have made a real um, attribution here of, of a variable by using the, the arrow while with the equal sign it doesn't make this attribution I just remove the names again now they are gone if I run the command again names not pop up here so that's the difference between the equal sign and the, the arrow but let's get back to our data frame now if we look into it you can see that we have kind of the same structure as before we have our heights our age and our names and the heights are still numeric while the names are now uh, string as they should be you don't see any equation um, uh, any quotation marks here but that's perfectly okay For if I look into the structure of the people df you can see now that's a data frame with four observations in three variables we have a height variable an age variable both are numeric and a names variable that is understood as a factor variable with these three with these four individual names and represented by these four numbers one two three and that the four is coming before the three doesn't matter at all in that case it's just because the um, strings are sorted um, alphabetically and Lucas comes after Leonie in the alphabet so that's why this guy here gets a four as, as index and she that's a free.
Okay, um, with that we have created a data collection variable where we can store data of different types. And I can now also do some calculations on this data frame. The same probably like we did before. I just copy paste stuff here and replace the matrix with the data frame. You can see here now, it kind of happens the same like in the matrix. So every element here is multiplied by this scalar, by these individual numbers, the heights, the ages. In case of the name, it doesn't make any sense because you can multiply a string or a factor variable by a number. That's why we get an NA here and a warning here that says it's multiplication is not meaningful for factors. And if we run this here, we have the same situation again. Um, so we would have, so the first things are, the first elements are essentially the same like we had in the matrix. So this part of the output is the same. And in the name cases, there would be some recycling going on. So it would again start with 100 with the first element of our vector here. But since it's still not meaningful to make a multiplication on the factors, uh, we get again an A and this warning message here. What we also can do now is, and we could also have done that before, to use the summary command. And that's one of these uh, commands that are for all kinds of data in a way specified. And this gives us some basic information about what's inside of our data set or of inside of our variable. So we can see we have uh, in the summary, we have our three variables here with um, the uh, basic basic statistics about the variables. So the minimum value, first quantile, median and mean. We come to that later on what that means. And the maximum value here, and the same is true for the age. While in case of the names, which is a factor variable, we get the counts of how often the individual um, values within the factor variable are represented. And since all our names are uh, unique, we we'll always get one here. Let's at another um, another vector uh, another, yeah, another vector another variable to our data set and I do it like I tried it before when I just specify a fourth column that's not present um, now it says it's an undefined column that is selected while in case of the um, matrix it says uh, index outside of borders. So it's uh, already a different warning or different error. And now I can try to put some values here. Let's say we have um, a female individual, a male individual, a female individual, and a male individual. And you can see no errors occurring here. And if I look into my data frame again, I have height, age, names, and a fourth column here, a fourth variable, which has male and female stored in that. And if I repeat this summary, you can see that I have here a character variable now with the length of four and no further indications about what that means. And we can also could also make that explicitly a factor because that's what it represents. Factor by putting factor in front of that. And we get now the summary. We get here this um, female count of two, male count of two because it's evaluated as a factor variable. We can also specify row names and column names like we did before and columns might be useful right now because this is not a very meaningful name for the columns. So let's say call names of my people 
data frame should equal to uh, the call names that we had already and add another call name that is sex. Oops. Ah. And we have to exclude, of course, the last one. So one, two, three, because the last one is the one that we want to replace with. So now we have here our four variables named as they should be. And again, all the data inside of that. We can also access individual elements in the data frame like we did with the matrix. I've just bypassed that here. So with that, of course, you can also specify the first, um, the fourth column and every individual row in that by using this uh, square bracket. And I also could access one individual value here by accessing this specific position. So in the first row, the third column and that cell. And I get back HANA as we expected it. But it comes also with data frames is a more convenient way to access things. You can instead of, for example, writing, I want to have all uh, names, like we probably would do with a matrix. I can replace that part, bit of code by just a dollar sign. And now I get the same result. So I get all the elements here, um, all the variable values within my names variable. It doesn't work for rows, so I can't specify HANA here, because it only works in the columns. So just remove that again. When you want to edit uh, values in this data frame, you could do it with these uh, accessing elements here, but there is a more convenient way, maybe from time to time, actually worth doing that. And that's use the edit command. And when I do that and type that correctly, I want to edit my data frame and I want to put the result of that in a new data frame. I could actually use the same variable here, but it's important that the output of this editing process is again stored in another variable, otherwise it's just lost. So when I do that, I get a window that's for you now off screen and I can go into a cell and for example, remove everything that's in there and call her uh, L. and change this h to 81 81 sorry and when i hit quit and i look into our new data frame you can see that these changes here have taken place while the original data frame is not affected by these changes okay now we have worked a bit with our variables, data frames, and with the um, with the matrices, and did some calculations with that. And that's probably the point where you would like to save whatever you did already with your data. And probably also you would like to edit your data in a more convenient way with a spreadsheet software that's more designed for that. So R is not as good for collecting data or uh, screening data with um, in an intuitive way for that spreadsheet software is actually better. So there, you probably would like to have a way of importing and exporting data from R. And that's what we will we'll talk about in the next session.